Well, this papyrus fragment, which usually goes by the name The Gospel of Jesus' Wife, uh, because it contains this uh, sensational reference to Jesus referring to my wife, uh, was originally brought to light in, well, into the public eye in, in 2012. And so that's the sort of first stage of, uh, of, of, of activity. And it was, it was pr propounded as uh, an authentic ancient document, an authentic ancient text, uh, which contributes to our understanding of uh, what early Christians thought about Jesus and his marital status. Uh, some texts say that Jesus was celibate, some texts allegedly say that he was married, and so this is all part of the rough and tumble of uh, discussion of who people thought Jesus was originally. And so that's the first phase. The first phase is that uh, uh, this is promoted as, a, as an ancient document. But as soon as the images of this papyrus, maybe good quality photos, were released pretty much straight away, and as soon as people started to look at these, uh, doubts were raised, not just about the sensational content, but also about the funny handwriting, the fact that it looked like it might have been copied from other documents. And, and so uh, the sort of phase two was that uh, there, was, there, were doubt, there, were, there was doubt cast uh, upon, this, upon this document. And so what the uh, editor, the, what the uh, person who was really promoting this text uh, did was to submit the document for scientific testing. And so two years, two years later, in 2014, uh, phase three, I suppose, act three, is that uh, this is shown to have been written on an authentic ancient piece of papyrus. Uh, but that still didn't show that this was an authentic document. That might sound strange, but actually it's very easy to get hold of a piece of ancient papyrus uh, and, and write on it. And so now scholars are coming to realize that this is actually uh, a modern fake, that the papyrus is ancient, but this is actually just a, a, a patchwork of text that someone in the last 10 years or so probably has put together. Uh, and so it's now largely regarded as, as a fraudulent text. Well, whenever we study early Christianity, we use sources. We use collections of sources from the New Testament, early Christian writers outside of the New Testament, Jewish sources from the time, Greek sources from the time, Latin sources of the time, and so on. And so whenever we're trying to formulate a, a historical understanding of who Jesus was and how the early Christian movement uh, developed, what ideas were current in Christianity, what events took place, we're solely reliant on those literary sources that we have. Uh, and so it's very important to know whether a particular source that we're using is, is genuine. Uh, so when we, when we come across any document, we want to know that it is genuinely ancient. We want to find out what its historical value is. Is it written near the, near the time? Is it written near the events by someone who knew about them? Or is it a later uh, sort of fictitious reconstruction by an ancient author. Uh, and so it's very important for us to know whether these uh, documents are authentic. Because of course, if you incorporate a, a modern fraudulent document in one study of the ancient world, you're going to be using what alleges itself to be a source, but actually isn't. You're going to build a, a historical hypothesis which doesn't have any foundation. Rather like in, in, in mathematics, if you use a, a theorem as part of a grand mathematical construction, if, if, if there's one flaw in the logic of the argument, if there's one flaw in the mathematical puzzle, then the whole thing crumbles. Uh, and similarly in early Christianity, we don't want our uh, constructions of what happened in the ancient world contaminated by false sources. So that's why it's particularly significant to know this. Uh, first of all, I think the document really has a very strange appearance. So m most, most scholars, when they f first look at it, think this, 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 has, an, this has an odd appearance. Uh, but also, I suppose, what, what the, the main contention is over is the, is the content and what, 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 what's written there. And so one of the arguments that has been used in the past to say this is a historical, a genuine ancient text is that there are other texts which support the idea that Jesus was married. 
Uh, but actually, in reality, there, there aren't. There, there, there are no parallels to this idea that uh, Jesus had a wife. Uh, others have pointed out the fact that uh, it fits very well in our modern culture, in our post Da Vinci Code age in which Jesus married Mary Magdalene and had children. And so uh, it's, it's very easy to see how this sort of document could gain currency today uh, uh, and belongs much more properly in the modern era rather than in the ancient, in the ancient world. And I think finally, one of the uh, really decisive tests is that uh, this document can be shown to have been copied actually from uh, readily available texts on the internet. And what's particularly noticeable when you compare the text of this Gospel of Jesus' Wife uh, document with certain texts on the internet is that it includes some of the mistakes uh, of those internet-based uh, texts, those transcriptions on the internet of the Gospel of Thomas in particular. It's the Gospel of Thomas, which is, is a genuine ancient uh, document, which is the real source for this. Now, in theory, the Gospel of Thomas could have been the source for this Gospel of Jesus' Wife in the ancient world, uh, but actually, because of the, the mistakes which have crept in in modern, modern editions of the Gospel of Thomas, these mistakes have crept into the Gospel of Jesus' Wife as well. And so that's why it looks very, very suspicious uh, and uh, looks like it belongs much more as a product of someone's modern imagination rather than ancient imagination.